Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning my loves, welcome back. I wanted to give you guys more readings, so here we are. We're going to look into every single zodiac sign and we're going to see what you can expect, what is coming to you when we talk about love and romance. So this is not for a specific person. This is just what you can expect, what is unfolding in your romantic life. This is going to be for all zodiac signs. What is coming to you, basically. Let's see what the universe has for you guys. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. For those of you guys that are interested in personal readings or any of our personal spell work, any of our products, you can find all of those on the description box below. All right, let's get into it. I call upon all my wise and loving spirit guides, spirits of light and love, ascended master, spirits of divination. Please step forward. Allow us to see what is unfolding for each one of the zodiac signs when it comes to love and romance. What they can expect, what is coming towards them for the remainder of the month of October. By the way, happy Hollow's Eve to everyone. If you guys do celebrate, comment below. Let me know how you guys celebrate. As you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, we do a big thing here. So we're pretty stoked and excited about that. All right, let's get to the nitty gritty. It is still Libra season. So we're going to begin here with Libra. Let's see what Libra can expect when it comes to love and romance. What is coming towards Libra in regards to love and romance? Here we go. Let's see what's going on with my Libras out there. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Libra. Let's see what you can expect, what is coming towards you, what is unfolding for you guys. All right. Let's see. Oh, there is massive transformation, massive changes that are unfolding for you guys. All right, Libra. So the bottom of the deck, we have the Hermit card here. And this is indicating to me, you guys are really internalizing a lot of what has transpired when we talk about love and romance. For some of you guys, there could have been an ending. For some of you guys, you're closing a certain chapter when it comes to love and romance. This could be with the person you're dealing with or a person from your past. However, what they are saying here is really try the best you can, Libra, to take things as they're unfolding right now. And the reason I say this is because whatever is coming to a conclusion, whatever is coming to an end, you have to understand we have the North Node in your sign, Libra. So a lot of you guys have been going through this year, a lot of transformation when it comes to self-value, when it comes to valuing yourself when it comes to you know you dealing with people or partnerships how much of yourself do you give how much do you sacrifice are you willing to take a stand for yourself and are you willing to let go of whatever is no longer serving you if there is a connection where they're not giving you or reciprocating the same type of energy are you willing to choose yourself and if you're not, and if you've been having difficulty with that and still trying to hold on to those connections, again, we're ending a cycle where the nodes are going to be changing. And this is something you need to master. This is something you need to accept. Basically, understanding in order to be able to give and receive love, one must first love to, one must first know to love thyself. Do you get what I'm saying? So this is something that you, a lot of you Libras have been experiencing all this year. It's almost like a reinventing of yourself or reconnecting or refining yourself and also defining who you are and defining what kind of connections and relationships you're looking for. So again, a lot of transformation that's happening for a lot of you guys, but the beauty in this is that the moment you're able to accept things as they are right now, stop trying to fight what's happening, stop trying to hold on to things, the moment you're willing to embrace this and yes, even get over your fears, the moment you're able to do this, you're going to be able to experience not only the longevity of a partnership, not only the happy ever ending, not only commitment or higher elevation of commitment, but you're also going to experience what it is to actually and genuinely and authentically experience reciprocation of love. So again, think of it this way. The universe is pushing you to 
really take inventory of the people that are currently surrounding you or the people that are around you. And this doesn't have to be partnerships. This could be connections, friends, relatives, family. Are they adding to your life? And if they're not, you have to be okay when the moment comes where you need to let go. And the moment you're able to do this, you're going to start to see not only your romance and your love sector flourish, but there is a strong connection that's coming in for a lot of you guys. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's almost at the end of October, even beginning of November, all the way to January is what they're saying, where all the hard labor, and when I mean by this is all the love that you've given to those that were unworthy of you, you're going to experience this type of connection with the new person that's coming in, but you have to make room for them. And in order to do that, you kind of have to help heal yourself by loving and choosing yourself. Okay. All right, my loves. I wish you guys the very best. Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. What is unfolding for them? What is coming towards them? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Scorpio, another sign that has been going through massive transformations. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, a bit of resistance that we're experiencing right now, Scorpio. Let's see what is unfolding for Scorpio. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go, Scorpio. Let's see what you can expect when it comes to love and romance. All right, here we go. Let's see what is unfolding for you. Bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Cups. So Scorpio, what I'm seeing here for you guys is there is a lot of, there is a lot of experiencing having, or I should say the universe putting you in positions where you're having to walk away from something. Um, for some of you guys, this could be walking away from connections. What I'm hearing is for some of you, you've been going through this debacle of dealing with a specific person that it's almost like you have been putting a lot of effort, a lot of energy, wanting to see a certain, a certain outcome. And it just hasn't unfolded the way you want it. And you're so fixated on, I've put so much effort, I've put so much time. And you want to feel some type of vindication or you want to feel like it was worth it in the end. But I feel like spirit is telling you here, Whatever is not working out for you, it doesn't mean that you're not worthy of it, Scorpio. It doesn't mean that you're not deserving of the happily ever after or that you don't deserve that partnership and relationship you're wanting. Yes, you are. But are you willing to walk away from who you're fixating on making that happen with? Do you get what I'm saying? The universe is telling you, I'm bringing to you what you're wanting. But in doing that, because the person that you're dealing with is not the one for you, I need to push them out. And I feel like for some of you guys, you guys are really struggling with that. You're really struggling with, you know, I don't, do I let go of this? That's been a very long term. I've put a lot of effort. I put a lot of energy, whether it's someone you just started dealing with or whether it's someone you've been dealing with for 10 years and you just don't see the outcome that you're wanting and you keep trying and trying and what they're telling you is the universe is prepared and ready to give you what you want Scorpio but are you okay with receiving that or are you going to continue watering yourself down settling for something that is very less than what you deserve and I feel for some of you guys you're dealing with a person that definitely has very strong commitment issues and they're keeping you from you experiencing that commitment that you're wanting. And it's almost as if you continuously keep going through this cycle of being let down or continuously being let down by this person. And for some of you guys, this could be something you've been dealing with for a very long time. For some of you guys, I'm hearing it's been three, four, five years. So again, it's like you continuously keep putting effort and energy trying to force an outcome with this connection 
But what they're showing you is that this person is who they present themselves to be. If they've let you down or if they've betrayed you or if they've cheated on you, that's who they are. Stop looking, you know, the other way, pretending that it's going to get better if they're not consistent and they're not, it's kind of the, the saying or what the saying goes, right? That it it's not about the apology, it's about the action behind the apology. And if they continuously keep letting you down, why are you wasting your time? Why are you putting yourself on on the sidelines waiting for them to get their shit together when in reality you could be experiencing the commitment, the higher elevation of commitment or dealing with a high vibrational person, but you're blocking yourself because you're holding on to heartache. You're holding on to feeling depleted. For some of you guys, this can also indicate that you block yourself from love because you've been hurt in the past and you're holding on to not so much the lesson, but you're holding on to the feeling of what the lesson caused you. And you're not allowing, you're not really allowing people to, to really connect with you. For some of you guys, I'm hearing that there, there was this cycle that you're coming to a conclusion, you're coming to an end. And in this process, there is a shedding that needs to happen. There is a old version of yourself that you must let go of. And I see for a lot of you guys, you guys are like scared out of your mind to let people in or to give yourself the opportunity of being happy again. That could be the reason why for some of you guys, you're still dealing with the same fucking devil because you're like, I know them. I'd rather know them than not than deal with someone new. And what you're doing is you're watering yourself down. You're putting yourself basically on the sideline. Um, you're keeping yourself from growth and expansion. So again, there's shedding that needs to happen here, Scorpio. And for a lot of you guys, you could be experiencing like um, a lot of like traumas being triggered. Uh, if you were dealing with someone and things were progressing and all of a sudden they triggered some type of fear in you, uh, some type of, you know, that is a reminder of how you've been treated in the past or what you've experienced in the past and your walls came up. What Spirit is saying is, you know, you got to remind yourself that not everyone is that person that did that to you. So, and and you have to also understand that we are all experiencing certain lessons and certain healings that need to happen. So what I mean by this is if you were dealing with someone and again, they triggered some type of insecurity, some something that kind of snowballed for you, um, it's important for you to really internalize, check yourself and make sure that it is something you're genuinely authentically experiencing and that it's not something to do that is connected to your past that is triggering you to bring those defenses up. Because for a lot of you guys, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing almost a blockage when we talk about connections and it's because of fear, because of what you've experienced in the past and it's something you're not wanting to do, which I completely understand and I get 100%, but sometimes... And I can tell you from experience, sometimes people will trigger something where you're like, wait, this feels too familiar, but it's not so much that they are that person. Obviously, they're not. It's a different person. But we kind of, you know, our hangups, we kind of put them on other people and it's unfair for them as well. OK. All right. Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with. Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Sun, moon, rising. Let's see what's unfolding for them in regards to love and romance. Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on in their love life. What is unfolding for them? What's coming towards them? Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Saggies. If you guys like these videos, don't forget to hit that like. Let's see what's going on with you, Saji. Let's see. All right, let's get to the needy greedy. All right.
bottom of the deck we have the king of pentacles i was laughing when i was shuffling because i almost pulled out the king of pentacles and the other card in in the middle or when i was breaking it was the sun so i kind of giggled because i felt like for a lot of you guys what i heard when i seen the king of pentacles is your struggle when it comes to relationships and partnerships is coming to an end or it's coming to some type of conclusion, Sagittarius. Now, with the King of Pentacles, you guys are looking or maybe feeling a little bit in your feelings right now. And it's because precisely at this point in time, time is very important to you or you feel or understand on a deeper level that your time is precious. So it's almost like I'm feeling the energy of I want to know what's going on. I want to know what we're going towards. I want to know, you know, is is this something long term? What I'm sensing from you guys is giving me very much Saturnian energy, which indicates to me time is of the essence or you're feeling like time is slipping away and you don't want to waste your time. So again, you guys are working towards building something long term or you're no longer entertaining anything that is temporary because you know exactly what it is that you want. Now, keep in mind, time is fluid, you guys. So for some of you guys, you're already experiencing this. For others of you, you will be experiencing this as time progresses. Now, what I'm seeing here is for a lot of you guys, like I said, you're really taking inventory of everything you've done in partnerships for some of you guys i'm really looking at you guys reminiscing towards the past like damn i really did this for this person i really went above and beyond i really forgave them i really looked over or ignored those red flags like i see you guys really reminiscing about the past and past mistakes in partnerships and relationships which sometimes i tell people not to dwell in the past but this is a good thing because they're showing me it's as of it's a reflection you guys are reflecting. You guys are kind of taking inventory of where you're at right now and you're wanting something solid or you're wanting to build something solid. So you're no longer, like I said, entertaining. I see you guys more assertive. I see you guys like really bumping or like, and I'm gonna be honest with you, they're showing me like very low levels of bars. So that is an indication to me that you guys are raising your standards. You guys are... You know, for some of you guys, it could be that you're going as far as like writing down exactly what you're looking for in a partner or writing down exactly the pros and cons when it comes to someone. And what they're telling me here is that you're becoming much more assertive in what it is that you want, um, Sagittarius. And that's exactly what's coming to you. Now, keep in mind, if the person that you're dealing with has been bringing you, giving you hot and cold, has been, you know really going around in circles and it's not really bringing any type of clarity in regards to where this relationship or where this connection is headed, then this is not your person. And what I mean by this is they're showing me a person walking through your door. So there is a person that's coming in or that will be showing up in your life. The moment you start to rearrange, basically having clarity on what it is that you want, there is a new person that is coming in for you. And this is someone that is going to be solid. This is someone that is going to like exactly know what it is that you want. You have the King of Pentacles here and Queen of Pentacles. This is a soul connection. So there is a person that's coming in that is coming in with purpose. Why? Because you've realized the purpose or your purpose when it comes to relationships and partnerships. Now, I also do see for some of you guys, I do see a person from the past. Keep in mind, this is not a message for you if you've been dealing with someone that is very toxic, okay? They're telling me if there was a very strong connection in the past and Sagittarius, are you connecting with this message? This is for you. There is a person from the past that you felt a very, very strong bond or a very strong connection, but it's almost as if there is some type of distance or something happened in your life and their life that both your lives kind of took you guys different directions. I feel that this person is coming back around. And the reason why this person is coming back around, again, timelines. What do I mean by this? In the beginning of your reading, the, the, the you know, Saturnian energy, which is the clock, which is time, which is knowing your worth and not wasting your time no more. So again, timelines. What do I mean by this? They're showing me a rearranging of timelines so that you can come together in a partnership. 
And this is only for those of you guys that, like I said, there was a very deep soul connection with someone from your past, but distance or circumstances or life kind of pushed you guys towards different directions. There was an elevation of soul that needed to happen either with you or with the partner. They're coming back around. And for some of you guys, you have not heard from this person in a while. This person is coming back around and they are ready. You are the person that's been heavily on your on their mind. You are the person that they know without a doubt you were for them, Sagittarius. And this person is coming back around. It's almost like they rearranged something in their life. They fixed their life or they put their shit together. And now they're ready to give you a higher elevated type of commitment. They're coming in and they're coming in strong. And for some of you guys, I'm seeing this more towards the middle of November. But I do see this person coming in and telling you, you know what, Sagittarius? We were it. You know, we were it or you were it. I never was able to forget you. You were heavily on my mind and they may come to you and tell you, I was trying to fix my life. I was trying to get, and I'm going to be honest, for a lot of you guys, it could have been a situation where the person could have created some type of distance because they had to travel or because they had to move or because of, but the purpose for this was they were trying to stack up. They were trying to find stability financial stability and I feel like they're coming back around and they're much more on solid ground they know exactly what it is that they want and again for some of you guys if you felt some type of connection right with someone that never really took flight this could be the person that's coming back around because again I feel like there is a almost a reconnecting of timelines where when you guys were kind of distanced or pushed away was because you guys were going on def different path waves. But I see you guys coming back again together. And for some of you guys, it could be that you hear from this person, you randomly get a text or they DM you or they find you on social media, something like that. But again, um, this is not nothing toxic. So if it's someone that you are waiting to hear from and it's been like a toxic on and off type of thing, that's not the message for you. This is primarily for those of you guys that are connecting with someone that you did feel a very strong connection, but it almost felt like life kind of put you guys or took you guys apart. I see a coming back. And, and the reason for this is I'm going to be honest, what I heard was this person was trying to be a better person for you. So, and they are showing me here with the pentacles and the page, they were stacking their money or they were working on themselves because they want it to be better for you. Okay, Sag? All right, my loves. Moving on. Let's see what's going on here with Capricorn. Let's see what's going on with my Cappies. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Let's see what is unfolding for them. What is coming towards them in regards to love and romance. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys are interested in any personal readings or any type of personal spell work, you can find all of that on the description link below. You'll be able to find our Shopify. By the way, you guys, our soap line is back in restock. Uh, you guys should be able to purchase. Once this video goes up, all those soaps will be available to you guys. And we have more going up as well. So stay tuned for that. All right. Let's see what's going on with my cappies, with my goats. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more shuffle. Here we go. All right. Cappy. Let's see what's going on with my Capricorns. Also, another sign that's been dragged. You guys are coming out of hell. <laughs> With Pluto, with the Pluto transit, right? <laughs> All right, let's get into the nitty gritty here. Let's see what's going on. Wow. Wowzers. Okay, bottom of the deck, boom, Capricorn. Ten of Pentacles. Okay, so building on solid foundations, no longer wasting time knowing exactly what it is that you want knowing exactly your value, your worth. For a lot of you Capricorns, whether it's your sun, moon, or rising, depending on the degrees, all of you guys have been going through massive transformation, right? There was obviously Pluto being in your sign, massive transformation. And for a lot of you guys, when we talk about 
relationships and partnerships, you guys have really been through the ringer. And there has been connections, there's been relationships that you guys have been building or have been working through. And all of it primarily has to do with understanding your worthiness and deser the deserving of happiness. And what do I mean by this? If I tell, if I sit here and tell a Capricorn, Capricorn, you deserve to be happy. They're going to be like, of course, I work so fucking hard at everything I do, right? But do they genuinely, authentically feel that they are worthy? No, they don't. And I don't care how evolved a Capricorn is. That Saturn energy is always going to make you feel like you got to try harder. Why? Because it rules over karma, right? So what do I mean by this? Capricorn is definitely not a sign that is capable of receiving unconditional love without feeling some type of way. And what do I mean by this? For some of you guys, you've been going through having to experience um love and relationships and connections, having to experience like someone really wanting to treat you good, wanting to give you what it is that you deserve. But for a lot of you guys, you've been tested in this in the sense of like you are kind of negative Nancy waiting for the other shoe to drop. For some of you guys, you keep going through cycles when it comes to relationships and partnerships of are you able to walk away? Are you able to walk away when you are putting so much effort, so much energy, and you're not seeing the results, you're not seeing the reciprocation? Are you able to walk away? And for some of you guys, you're really struggling with this. But here's the thing. What they're showing me is if you can see right at the center, we have the three of swords, right? Three of swords is betrayal. It's heartbreak, right? It's cheating and fidelities. It's being let down, right? It is people or you trusting people giving them your heart and they stomp on it. That's the three of swords, right? Next to the three of swords, we have the nine of cups and the sun. What is this telling me? This is telling me that your happiness and your wish fulfillment is already in your energy, Capricorn, but you're struggling because you're holding on to shit from the past. You're holding on to, or telling yourself the same story over and over because that's all you've experienced. So instead of being able to draw in what you're worthy and deserving of, what you do is you keep pushing it back or you keep repulsing it or you keep self-sabotaging yourself. Now at the bottom, I have the Ace of Cups with the Eight of Wands, quick and fast movement when it comes to love and romance. I don't care what spectrum of a Capricorn you are, whether you're Sun, Moon, Rising or Venus, your love life is about to change, especially with Pluto leaving your sign. So what do I mean by this? For a lot of you guys, there's a soulmate connection that's coming in. For others of you, there is a relationship that you've thought of or in your head you felt like it just, it almost becomes something, but then it doesn't, it kind of falls apart. There's a lot of self-sabotaging that you're doing, Capricorn. And believe it or not, a lot of how they're acting or how they're treating you has everything to do with you and your vibration. So what I mean by this is the moment you start to feel a little weird or you start to feel a little defensive, you start attacking or you start to kick in that wall up of defense mechanism to protect yourself. And what you're actually doing is you're kind of pushing them further and further away. But what I'm seeing is, again, once Pluto, Pluto's heavy ass energy in your sign, once it completely leaves your sign, your love life is going to be completely transformed. And for a lot of you guys, the best advice I can give you is Try to catch yourself whenever you are intentionally self-sabotaging yourself. It's almost like you guys don't know how to receive love. Um, so I would highly encourage a lot of you guys out there, if you're connecting with this, listen to what I'm telling you. Focus on your worthiness and your self-love Capricorn. Though you were born with Saturn energy and Saturn has taught you all your life that things don't come easy, they don't. But the simple fact that you are human, the simple fact that you are a Capricorn, you were born a goat. You were born blessed. Why? Because you're one of the second sign, right? That 
can overcome anything. And just like you are capable of smashing every single goal that you put your or fixate on, all that effort, all that hard work, all that determination, you're also worthy of that. What do I mean by this? Everyone in your life is a reflection of who you are and how you feel inside. Every person in your life, exes, the long list of exes or the people that you're dealing with or the partner that you're dealing with right now, they are showing up in your life a certain type of way because that's a reflection of how you feel inside. What do I mean by this? As an example, if you've been dealing with a situation where they have commitment issues and it just seems like they don't want to give you commitment, but yet they're always around and they're always, you know, trying to spend time with you, etc. There is a part of you that feels that you're not deserving of that type of commitment. And they are just mirroring back to you. So switch that way of thinking. If there is a reconciliation you've been hoping for, it's here. But when it happens, are you going to continuously keep self-sabotaging yourself? Are you going to put in the work and realize, you know what, every single day for the next coming, let's say 15 days, I'm going to look at myself in the mirror and I'm going to do mirror magic by speaking into me the love that I'm deserving of. Standing in front of the mirror every single day for 15 days, telling myself, Capricorn, I am worthy. I am deserving of love. The simple fact that I am so courageous when it comes to love, the simple fact that I am go always going above and beyond to give love unconditionally and extremely loyal, I am deserving of that because I was created to be this because there is a reflection of me out there that is worthy of my connection that is going to mirror back the same loyalty, the same love, the same devotion, the same adoration, whatever it is. Focus on yourself, Capricorn. And for those of you guys that are looking for a reconciliation, I see it coming towards you, but here's the advice. You want it to happen and happen quick. Stop making them the main character in your life and start making yourself the main character. Start telling yourself, I release whatever blockages are keeping me and so and so from each other. I open myself up to receiving all the love and adoration from them. And start focusing on yourself, Capricorn. Start doing things for yourself. Go out there, have fun, do whatever you must do for yourself. Watch how quickly they will reach out. There's something about you. There's a part of you that struggles with receiving love. Though love is all around you. All right, my loves, moving on. Let's see what's going on here with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. What's coming towards Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Aquas. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. What is coming towards Aquarius in regards to love and romance? Love and romance. Here we go, Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right. Here we go. Wow. Wowzers, Aquarius. Bottom of the deck, boom, Knight of Cups. Those of you Aquarius that have been single for a very long time, these are specifically for those, let me take a sip of my coffee, you guys. All right, so they're telling me, for those of you guys that have been single for a very long time, and I'm talking to the Aquarians out there that have been single for over four years, you keep wondering or you keep thinking, or for some of you guys, you keep reminiscing about the past, almost like the past was the best time of your life. 
And by you doing that, what you've done is you've created this loop that continuously keeps putting you in a position of feeling like, yeah, the past was better. Keep reminiscing about that because the present is not matching up to, to the past, basically. So there's a loop that I keep seeing you guys go around, but that's no longer going to be the case. Again, keeping in mind Pluto's going into your sign Aquarius and, fi and finally stationing there. So there is a transformation that is going to be happening for a lot of you guys when we're talking about love and romance, okay? Now, I said wowzers because the first three cards are major arcana. So obviously we're talking about changes that are happening and that are coming into your life that are completely out of your control. And one of them is the realization of understanding that you are your own driver, meaning if you're the Aquarius that has been single for a very long time and you're like, when the fuck is there going to be change? When is there going to be some type of, you know, change in my love life? You're realizing or you will be realizing in the next coming days, it's almost like an aha moment that's coming to you where you're realizing, you know what? I've been deciding to drive this car around and around in a loop. And I'm no longer going to do that. I see you guys getting extremely empowered. And for some of you guys, you're having to take a stand. You're having to take a stand when we're talking about partnerships and relationships. What do I mean by this? Well, if you've been dealing with someone that, let's just say, has commitment issues. Or let's just say that you've convinced yourself you don't want a commitment. Because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to rock the boat. You're realizing, you know what, fuck this. I do want commitment. And I'm going to speak up on it because I can't continue not knowing where this is going. So I see you guys really standing your ground on something, but you're also taking charge of your love life. For some of you guys, you're making the decision of putting yourself out there, like no longer making excuses. And I don't want to say making excuses in the sense of like, as an example, what's coming to mind is if you've been a mother and you've been focusing primarily on raising your kids and you're like, you kind of forgot or disconnected from a woman. And it's like, I'm just attached to the mother figure of my energy. It's like, you're realizing, you know what? I've been doing this long enough. At this point, I want some type of passion. I want some type of excitement in my life. So I see you guys making changes. And it's changes for the betterment of you. It's changes where you've been complacent in the past and you're no longer being complacent. Again, for those of you guys that have been dealing with situationships, I see you guys stepping into your power and realizing I don't want this or I want something more. And you're speaking up on that. Why? Because you're no longer biting your tongue, Aquarius. I see you guys extremely empowered and I see you guys being unapologetic about what it is that you want or what your expectations are. For others of you, if you've been dealing with a situation where you feel like your partner is not really putting in effort or you're the one that's having to pretty much carry the whole relationship. And yes, I'm talking about financial, not just romance, not just emotional, not just maintaining the relationship, but could physically be or I should say could actually be maintaining, you know, money wise. I see you guys standing your ground. I see you guys being like, you know what? You've been slacking for so fucking long. It's time that you either get with it or there's the door. Um, you're being an unapologetic about it. And by doing so, what's happening is that there is a rebalancing of your energy, Aquarius, where you're becoming much more focused and much more determined. And in doing this, like I said, there's a rebalancing that's happening in your life and it's going to greatly impact your romance sector and your love life. Now, for others of you, it's almost like you've carried on or put yourself or got yourself so busy that you kind of forgot about love for a while or maybe you feel like nothing exciting has been going on in your love life. That's not going to be the case no more. And again, I see you guys purposely putting effort towards, you know, putting yourself out there or maybe even opening up for some of you guys. It's like there's a realization of, yes, I want this and I'm no longer going to make up 30,000 excuses of why I shouldn't do it. 
I'm just going to put myself out there and see, see what happens. And the moment you do this, Aquarius, your love life is going to completely expand and it's going to be very exciting. I'm seeing a lot of dates for a lot of you guys. I'm seeing a lot of connections happening here. But I feel that in that process, you're also going to be standing your ground, which helps you weed out the ones that are just not for you. And you're able to put your energy and effort towards a specific individual. For some of you guys, it could be a Libra coming in. For others of you, it could be a Cancer. For others of you, it could be a uh, Taurus or a Capricorn or Virgo energy coming in for some of you guys. But there is definitely a... I'm seeing like a new go, a fresh start, a clean slate for some of you guys. And it's coming, like I said, for some of you guys, you're making a decision, especially if you've been dealing with someone for a while and it just hasn't moved forward the way you want it. I see you guys like making the call, making the decision. You know what? Either you step up or if you don't, like I'm moving on. And I feel like they may try to test you, but in testing you, they're actually doing you a favor because that's what gets the ball going. That's what gets the ball rolling. And I see you guys refocusing that energy or putting that energy towards yourself and making yourself a priority. The moment you're able to do this, again, I see you guys being fun with it. I see you guys being playful. By the way, Aquarius, I'm hearing if friends or people around you are inviting you to social outings and stuff like that, definitely go don't let that shit in the back burner. Take those opportunities because right now it's all about really, really trying the best you can to really capitalize in new opportunities because it's going to open up a lot of doors for you guys, especially when we're talking about love and romance. All right, my lovelies, moving on. Let's see what's going on with... Pisces. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. What's coming towards them? Let's see what changes are coming towards Pisces, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Are you guys excited about Halloween? Do you guys even celebrate Hallow's Eve? If you do, what do you do? Do you guys dress up? We all dress up and we all have a massive celebration. And this year we're going to be celebrating twice. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> all right, let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Also another sign that's been going through massive transformations, right? All right, here we go. Pisces. Five of Pentacles, Seven of Cups, The Fool, Ace of Swords, Two of Swords, and The Hangman, bottom of the deck, Eight of Wands. Okay. Pisces, I see you guys at the almost at the pinnacle of the end of a struggle when it comes to relationships and partnerships. For, for some of you guys, you're deciding, if not this week, I'll go as far as to say that, if not this week, I see you guys by the end of October making a decision to walk away from something that is no longer of interest to you. What do I mean by this? If you guys have been struggling when it comes to partnerships or if you're dealing with someone that just is not giving you any type of commitment or any type of consistency is what I'm hearing. For some of you guys, you're realizing you fell for a person that was the illusion, meaning you fell for the illusion that you had of them. They're starting to show you who they really are and you're starting to see them really in the light of who they are. And you're deciding at this point in time, I'm checked out. For some of you guys, this person has really been pulling you or pushing you or dragging you through the ringer. You've been so fearful and so scared of rocking the boat, Pisces. For some of you guys, you've like allowed. I'm not I'm gonna be honest. For some of you guys, you've allowed this person to like ice skate all over your ass, honestly. And but it's like it's it's been chipping and chipping and chipping away at you 
Whereas this person doesn't realize that because you keep putting up with their bullshit, they don't realize that you're at the pinnacle of that end. Meaning, the moment that they test you again, I see you making the decision of being like, I'm fucking done. And I see their head spinning. It's like, what happened? Like, why? Like, what? what really caused it? And it's like, it's everything you've been putting me through. It's everything I've gone through. It's everything that... It's almost like this person is so narcissistic that they do not realize everything they've put you through and the fact that you have been dealing with it. But at this point, you're like, you're over it. And for some of you guys, it could be that what kind of gets you out of that situation is the fact that you're already embracing or starting a new connection. For some of you guys, if you've been unhappy in this relationship, I see you guys like seeking out some type of connection. For some of you guys, it could be through social media, um, where a person starts to make you feel desirable, and then you realize that aha moment, like what the fuck, I am desirable. I am Pisces. I'm beautiful. I'm amazing. Like, why am I putting up with this shit? Why am I putting up with this fuckery? And I don't want to say that that's per that person's purpose is to reignite the, fa the, the passion in you, but it's almost like they're serving as a reminder that, yes, you are amazing, and the person that's with you should understand that, and if they don't, then that's not the person for you. And I see you guys, again, making the decision to embrace something new and leave something behind because at this point in time, you're no longer going to you're no longer going to be unhappy. You're no longer like, I don't even want to say you're choosing yourself. It's almost like a survival mode at this point, right? Um, what's coming to mind is like, I don't know if you've forgotten how amazing you are, Pisces. I don't know if you've forgotten that you are deserving of love that you are deserving of reciprocation, that you're not asking for too much, that you're not too much, though your partner has made you feel this way. And I feel that you get that reminder when this connection happens or if you're already in that connection or communicating with someone. It's like they start to help you build your confidence Because of how much they admire you. And I feel like you've been having the need to have a conversation that is going to be either a make or break type of conversation, but you've been procrastinating on it because there is fear of rejection or there's fear that they're not going to choose you. But I feel like you're the one that's going to be bringing that conversation to the table. And it comes, unfortunately, when you are reminded by others how amazing you are. All right, my loves. Best of luck. Moving on, let's see what's going on with Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is coming towards them in regards to love and romance? Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What changes are unfolding for Aries? Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more shuffle. Here we go, Aries. Let's see what's going on with you guys. In regards to love and romance. All right, so let's get to the needy greedy. Wowzers. <laughs> Bottom of the deck, seven of cubs. Okay, so we've been having this dance with you guys, Aries. I want to say all fucking year. Um, where you guys keep self-sabotaging yourselves or your connections because I'm going to be honest, you guys are scared as fuck of either being vulnerable or actually giving in to love. The bottom of the deck, Seven of Cups, is choices, opportunities. Um, For some of you guys, you've been 
jeopardizing the connection either because you are intimidated that this person has a lot of options or you yourself has been keeping yourself busy entertaining other possibilities because you're scared of commitment. However, whether you're ready or not, right at the center, we have the Ten of Pentacles. So there is a stable relationship that is unfolding or will be unfolding for you guys. The Three of Wands indicates to me being in a position where you're missing, wanting, or thinking of a person. For some of you guys, there could have been a bit of a distancing happening. Some of you guys could be dealing with a Leo. Others of you could be dealing with another fire sign, uh, Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries like yourself. I see Earth energy here, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. I see water energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Um, really all the signs. But what they're showing me here is, again, it's, it's almost like you guys are battling or have been battling um, You've been fighting a connection or you've been fighting. It's a, what I'm hearing is like you, there's two parts of you. They're showing me two wolves. And that usually indicates to me when we are going through like an inner struggle within ourselves, when we feel like we want something, let's just say it this way. We feel like our mind wants something, but our heart wants something else. And it's like you can't get it together. You can't seem to get it together. However, by the end of October, beginning of November, there is someone that is going to be very heavily on your mind. Again, there could have been some distancing. Maybe for some of you guys, you're already experiencing this. And you know that there is no other way of reconnecting or rebuilding or fixing this connection unless you guys actually take the steps towards something long term. So it's almost like you guys have reached the end of a cycle of not giving each other some type of exclusivity or some type of commitment. And the only way that this con this connection can progress is through some type of exclusivity or making it more committed. And I see you guys really kind of hesitating or fighting it or fighting the connection, but I see it unfolding whether you're ready or not, Aries. And for some of you guys, I will go as far as to say you could have been dealing with a situationship where maybe you feel reserved or you feel some type of way of like not fully trusting the situation or trusting the person because of the way it's been in the past however this connection is unfolding whether you're ready or not and i will go as far as to say that for a lot of you aries by next year there's a higher elevation of commitment or marriage that's happening even those of you guys that are single right now as an example if you've been single for a while and it just seems like you know, the connections or the people that you deal with are not really leading the connection into a commitment. Those are not your people. Okay. And what I mean by this is I see a strong foundation that is going to be built. Yes. For some of you guys, it's, you already know if you're connecting with this, you already know who they're talking about. It's a, a connection you've been fighting for a while now, um, or they could be fighting as well. But I see this stabilizing. I see it becoming something long term. And for some of you guys, there is commitment or there is marriage. Um, and it could be unfolding from now all the way to December. But I do see it going into 2025 where you guys are coming out of some type of situation going into another, but with more commitment. Take that however you want to take it. Um if it was something casual, it's becoming something official. If it's something official, it's becoming a commitment. If it's a commitment, it's becoming marriage or moving in with each other. But again, I see a research that's happening for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that have like childhood traumas in regards to connections, in regards to marriage. Even for some of you guys, maybe you felt like marriage is something that was just not for you. For others of you, it could be that you just had decided you didn't want no type of commitment. Here's the thing, Aries. If you're connecting with this reading, you're already committed. That's the reason why your head and your heart are fighting. And they're fighting because your heart wants what it wants. 
and you can try to trick your mind into thinking or believing whatever you want but at the end of the day it's kind of like i tell my clients when you're trying to fight your destiny you can give 30,000 turns you will end up where you're meant to to end up and that's exactly what i'm seeing for you guys so my advice for you guys is especially those of you guys that are single out there you're not going to be single for very long and get ready because this commitment is coming in strong this connection is coming in strong i said commitment i meant connection this connection is coming in strong for others of you. If you know who they're talking about, stop fighting the connection. Stop self-sabotaging yourself, Aries. Yes, you do deserve love. Yes, you deserve commitment. Yes, you deserve happily ever after. And just because whatever experience you had in childhood, just because your parents, just because whatever didn't have it doesn't mean that you're not deserving or worthy of it. And maybe you've convinced yourself that you're not worthy of it because you're actually scared of accepting that you do want it and then you don't have it and then it's a letdown. No, you're the one that decides and you're the one that dictates how your life goes. All right, I mean, Aries, I said Libra. For some of you guys are dealing with the Libra. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what is unfolding for them in regards to love and romance. What changes are coming for them? What changes are coming towards you, Taurus, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus, in regards to love and romance? Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. One more shuffle. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. If you guys are interested in any personal readings or any personal spell work, you can find all of those on the description link below. All right, Taurus, let's see what's going on with you guys. Let's get to the needy greedy. All right, let's see what's going on with my Taurus. Bottom of the deck, the sun. All right, Taurus, what I'm seeing for you guys is, especially those, <laughs> especially of those of you guys that have felt or have experienced a little bit of lack of momentum when it comes to your love and romance, I want to tell you by the end of November, you're going to be much more busier or you're going to be going on multiple dates there is a lot of momentum that is going to start to pick up for you guys, but I'm seeing it more towards November. Um, and the reason for this is because they're showing me it's time for you to put yourself out there, Taurus. It's time for you to fully embrace the beauty aspect of like not having to deal with hard lessons. And for a lot of you guys, it's almost like you're relearning how to have fun and how fun dating actually is. So I don't know who they're talking to here for some of you guys you've been out of the game for a long time for others of you maybe you were coming you're coming out of a committed relationship where you were committed for a very long time because what i'm seeing is like i see you guys going out on dates and it's almost like a feeling of like oh i didn't know that it was going to be this fun but the reason why it's fun is because you're multi-dating so again for some of you guys, it could be that you seek out um, you seek out online dating. Maybe for some of you guys, you're just trying it out and you actually like it or you actually connect, connect with multiple people that gives you the opportunity to go on different dates. Whatever the situation may be, fully embrace this, Taurus, because I'm seeing a, a, a burst of energy that's happening in your love life. Especially when they're showing me like roses weathering, it's an indication to me that it's been a, a, a it's been a bit a bit dead in that in that aspect. But it's almost like a resurgence of energy that's happening here, especially towards November. Like I said, I see options coming in for you guys. For some of you guys, I see you guys trying online dating. Especially those of you guys that hate online dating, and by hearing me say this, you're like, oh no, I would never. Trust me, you're gonna find yourself doing that, and. Trust me when I tell you, you're going to have a blast to the point of actually even feeling a little bit under a pickle because there's like, I, I see you really 
entertaining two options or like really liking two people, the advice here is go for the person that's more sturdy. And what I mean by that is either this person is military background or this person is like a police officer, some type of like official government official, something like that. Or the person that seems a little bit like, I don't want to say stuck up, but a little bit like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's like a military mentality, maybe someone that's extremely structured, maybe someone that is very to the point type of energy. They're telling you to embrace that connection because for some of you guys, that's the connection that's going to be building into something more solid. Um, but I do see you guys struggling with two options in like I said, this could be now all the way to November, but I do see it progressing. Um, but again, you will find yourself more drawn or you will find the connection to be more authentic with the person that you feel may be a little bit more cold or more distant. And I don't mean it as in like they're playing mind games or anything like that. No, I feel like there's something about them or their background where they're very like they're showing me military time. So that usually indicates to me either a person that's military military or a person that is like a cop or some type of government position um, or someone that could seem a bit reserved, but very assertive. I hope that makes sense. OK. Now, for others of you, if you have been dealing with a situation where there's been a lot of inconsistency, I feel like as we progress into November, there is new connections that are forming where you're going to feel like you're questioning or doubting the connection that you're in right now. And what I mean by this is, I'm going to be honest, I feel like for a lot of you guys, you have been feeling, if you are in a relationship, I feel like you've been feeling like your person kind of is just going with the flow or they're not appreciating you or they're not making you feel appreciated. They're not me. It's almost like they're taking you for granted. And I'm going to be honest. Um, I don't see it progressing anything or I don't see it progressing into something better. If anything, I feel like the universe is bringing to you people that are getting your attention or people that are wanting your attention because it's almost like you're wanting some type of outcome and universe is stepping in and telling you, Taurus, I will give you this outcome, but you need to realize that it's not where you're at. So it's about embracing new opportunities, Taurus. All right, my loves, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, let's see what's going on with Gemini's. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, what new changes or opportunities are coming to them in regards to love and romance? Let's see what's going on with my Geminis. All right, Gemini, let's see what's going on with you guys. All right, here we go, Gemini. Oh, wow. Bottom of the deck, Seven of Swords. When I was shuffling, I seen this energy. <clears throat> okay. Gemini, I feel like you guys are coming to, I feel like you guys are coming to a point in your life where you're realizing for a lot of you guys, it's almost like you're experiencing a lot of aha moments or you're experiencing a lot of synchronicities. And the reason for this is for some of you guys, you're realizing you've been self-sabotaging. For others of you, you've been deceiving yourself or you haven't been completely honest with yourself when we're talking about a, conne a specific connection. However, for others, what I'm hearing is you've been deceiving yourself into believing that you don't want a connection or that you don't want a commitment. And I feel for a lot of you guys strongly, it could potentially have to do with the past or it could have potentially been because you've gone through it. You know what it feels like to be heartbroken and you promise yourself or convince yourself you were never going to do that again or you weren't going to allow people to get close enough to hurt you. However, what I'm seeing here is 
with the world card and the two of pentacles and the empress there's a shift that's happening with a lot of you guys and as we progress into december i see you guys rearranging certain things of your life so it's almost like with the seven of swords i feel like you guys have been doing doing things that keep you from focusing on love because you're fucking scared of either falling in love or you're scared of getting hurt again. Now, take it however it resonates. But what I'm being shown is like you've been doing everything under the sun except, except that you're wanting a relationship or except that you are wanting a connection. That at this point in your life, you're craving a connection. And I feel that the moment that you're able to fully accept I am deserving and I do want this or I think it's time I start dating. I think it's time I start putting myself out there. I think it's time that I open myself up to new connections. I think it's time I stop fucking around with people from the past that is not going to go nowhere. It hasn't gone anywhere. And it's time for me to move on and give myself the opportunity of finding someone that could potentially bring to me and I can bring to them happiness. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm seeing you guys realize there's a lot of things when it comes to love and romance that you've been doing and it hasn't been going good for you. But the reason why it hasn't been going good for you is because you've been doing everything you possibly can to negate or to not accept that you do deserve to be happy and that you want to be happy. And again, it could be because of the past. It could be past experiences. It could be for some of you guys, it could be that you keep dealing with the person from the past that keeps coming back around. But it's almost like they're not who you thought they were, but it's like you've been fixated on this connection for so long that you've convinced yourself, even though you know that they're not who you fell for in the very beginning. I hope that makes sense. And it's like you're making the decision to bring balance into your life. And I see you guys stepping into your power. I see you guys, like I said, getting out of your comfort zone. I see you guys putting yourself out there. And you're going to start to realize that the moment you start to put yourself, like genuinely put yourself out there and genuinely give yourself the opportunity or even claim that you're open to receiving love that the universe is bringing to you the moment you start to do this everything is going to start to rearrange in your life and what i mean by this is i see you guys stepping into your glow up era for some of you guys you're working out for others of you you're deciding to switch up your style for others of you i see you guys be like focusing more on your physical appearance and the reason why you're doing this is because you're being more motivated and the reason why you're being more motivated is because you start to see that you're starting to get more traction in your love life or people start to come in and are trying to fight to get your attention and you start to realize you know what i am the fucking price you know what i do deserve this attention and i do deserve and i am worthy of choosing who i want to date not begging for people to date me i choose who i want to date i see you guys really more empowered and you're letting go of your fears you're letting go of what's been holding you back and again, like I said, for some of you guys, you've been deceiving yourself into thinking that you are in a situation right now because this is what the universe wanted. And I see you guys accepting, you know what? No, I keep repeating this fucking cycle because I keep thinking this way and I'm no longer going to do that. I'm making the decision to change the outcome to take hold of my life, to bring balance. For some of you guys, there's a lot of balance that's happening. I'm not going to lie. And what I'm seeing for a lot of you guys is, again, a glow up that's coming. So I don't know in what area of your life you felt like you were unstable, unsteady, or it was all over the fucking place. But I see you guys much more committed to yourselves. And the moment you start to become more committed to yourself... The moment you start to have discipline in your life, you start to see everything change and you realize that you were the one that was keeping you stagnant or stuck. Why? Because you have options now or you're realizing your worth 
and in realizing your worth and realizing that you deserve whatever your heart desires, the universe is going to reciprocate that by showing you physically that people are willing to get or fight or beg for your attention, Gemini. All right, my loves. Moving on. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys liked these videos, definitely give it a like. Comment below. Let me know. So I can keep them coming and I can upload more often for you guys. You guys motivate me when I see that. <laughs> and it kind of forces me to be more proactive on my channel. Also subscribe so you guys can get notified when I go live. I've been doing that a little bit more often now. All right, let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. What's coming to them? What changes are unfolding for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more shuffle. Here we go, Cancer. Let's see what's going on with you guys in regards to love and romance. All right, here we go. Let's see what's going on with my Cancers. All right. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Bottom of the deck, we have the strength card. All right. So what I'm seeing for you, Cancers, is you're walking away from situations or connections that are no longer making you happy. And I feel that this, for a lot of you guys, this has been a long time coming. Keep in mind, you are a cardinal sign and all the cardinals have really been going through it and have been tested in the sense of self-worth, in the sense of choosing yourself or being forced to choose yourself um, and overly emotional for you, Cancer especially. I feel like you guys have really been struggling holding on to a connection or a relationship. You've been trying the best you can to make it work. But at this point, you're realizing that your efforts have not been, like it's not worth it at this point, basically. And it's almost like you're realizing you were so fixated in trying to fix the relationship that you kind of forgot about yourself. And it's almost like you're reminding yourself or you're having that realization of, why am I even fighting for this when I myself feel like I'm very unhappy or when I myself feel like I'm no longer the version of who I was because this relationship or this connection has affected me or has become my whole life that it's I'm only like looking at myself in the mirror. I'm only like a glimpse of who I used to be. So it's like the realization of having to accept that no matter it's kind of what I'm hearing is for some of you guys, it's kind of like, it's kind of when you realize it doesn't matter how much you try to love someone, like you can try to love someone really hard and by loving them harder, it doesn't make them love you back or reciprocate that. Do you get what I'm saying? Like you could go above and beyond for someone, but if that person doesn't genuinely love you, they're never, ever going to appreciate or understand your efforts because it's not the other way around. Do you get me? It's, 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 they're not going to understand or comprehend that because they're just skimping through the relationship or they're just cruising through the relationship. They have no concept of the effort, of the energy, of everything. If you keep telling someone you're hurting me, you're hurting me and you keep giving them the knife and they keep stabbing you and stabbing you and stabbing you, like who's at fault? Is it them that keep stabbing you or is it you that you're aware they're going to do that and you keep handing them the weapon? Do you get what I'm saying? So you're realizing at this point, you know what? I was scared or I was fearful of walking away. But now I'm realizing that it's more, much more painful and much more difficult to keep holding on to someone that keeps letting you down. So you're realizing your power, Cancer. You're realizing your strength. 
you're forcing yourself to accept that you're no longer going to be investing what's giving you no return. So I see a lot of you guys ending relationships or ending connections, walking away. And the funny thing is that the moment you're willing to walk away from this connection or the moment you start to pull away or the moment you show this person that you're about business and standing on your business is the moment that this person is trying to win you back or is the moment that this person is wanting all of a sudden to sit down and let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, Cancer. All this time you've been talking about it and all I do is tell you, all you do is complain. And now that you're willing to walk away, like let you not walk away. Let's sit down and talk about it. But is that person really worth it? Because if you've been going on for a very long time telling them you're unhappy and they're not paying attention to that, but just because they feel like you're about business now, they're wanting to show you that they care enough to want to hear you out, walk away from this cancer. Walk away from this. Why? Because through walking away from something that is no longer serving you, and you come to the realization or understanding that you deserve the same type of treatment, right? Your way of loving, if you come across someone and you're in a relationship with them or in a connection with them and they often make you feel like you're so difficult to deal with, you're difficult to that person because that person doesn't love you or they don't reciprocate your feelings because if they do, you're never going to be too much for them. Never. I don't care how difficult you are. I don't care how needy or how detached or how difficult you are. It does not matter. A person that loves you is going to want to put effort in learning your love language. A person that all they do, all they freaking do is complain about how difficult you are. It's because you're an inconvenience because you're not making it easy for them. We have the seven of pentacles here with the queen of pentacles, seven and one pentacle. That's eight, the eight of pentacles. Do you get what I'm saying? The moment you're going to transform your life, Cancer, is the moment that you realize you are the prize. You are the main character. You are your director. You decide what paper or what role you give to people. And if you keep giving the role of the main character to the person that does not appreciate you, it's time you start to do some cuts. Because you should always be your main character. And the Eight of Pentacles is about putting effort and energy. Hard work. But it's putting effort and energy towards working and rebuilding your self-cancer. Your self-concept. How you see yourself. How you view yourself. How you carry yourself. The moment you're able to do that, you will experience the rewards of experiencing living and having something long-term and solid. All right, my loves. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Leo. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. What is unfolding for Leo, love and romance? What changes or new opportunities are coming their way? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Leos. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. Let's see what's going on with my Leos out there. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more shuffle. All right, here we go, Leo. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Here we go. Let's get to the nitty-gritty. Very interesting, you guys. <laughs> All righty. Bottom of the deck, Ace of Wands. Wow. When I was shuffling, I seen the Ace of Wands and the Sun card. So... For a lot of you Leos, there is new beginnings when it comes to love and romance. For some of you guys, especially those of you guys that have been single, I highly encourage you to embrace being social 
from now all the way to the middle of November because I do see a connection forming and for some of you guys it's a connection that's coming through that could potentially be a friend or a family member that introduces you to them. The holidays are right around the corner so again I'm seeing someone being introduced to you and the moment this connection happens you guys are going to feel it immediately because it's a very strong physical connection and then you start to understand that you guys have or are intellectually connected as well. You guys highly admire each other. So again, new connection alert coming through for you guys. For others of you guys, there is a re-energizing of the passion and the lust and the love in the relationship, especially those of you guys that have been going through a lot of obstacles or have been experiencing a bit of resistance or misunderstandings. It's almost like being able to get on the same page and finally being able to get to a place of being safe with each other that you can lust after each other, okay? What do I mean by this? I mean, if your love life has, not love life, your sex life has been dead, it's going to be, it's, it's going to pick up, you guys. <laughs> All right, so what I'm seeing here is, again, we have the moon and the sun, right? We just experienced a full moon. What they're showing me here is the yin and the yang. There has been, for a lot of you Leos, you've been experiencing a bit of imbalance in your relationship or in your connection. It could potentially have a lot, of, a lot to do with power struggles, pride, and ego. Uh, you're probably dealing with someone and I'm going to go as far as to say you're probably or have been probably dealing with someone that has the same type of ego that you do Leo and yes even my most humble of Leos have a huge ego <laughs> so for some of you guys there's a pub uh there's been a, a bit of a power struggle going on here it's almost like they don't want to give up their independence or you haven't won haven't wanted to give up your independence. It's almost like you guys know the connection is there or have been feeling the connection, but are still fighting, you know, giving into each other. That's no longer going to be the case, especially with this King of Wands. Passion takes over. Basically, being able to put uh, egos and pride aside and being able to bring in balance and fully embrace your masculine and feminine energy. Now, I do see, like I said, there is a resurgence of sex drive, of vitality, of desire, passion being ignited, uh, especially those of you guys that have been feeling a bit distant or disconnected from your partner. That's no longer going to be the case. I see it becoming, it's almost like they're relighting the candle, <laughs> relighting the flame. So again, a, a reignition of, or a restart, I should say, of the connection or the partnership. Now, for those of you guys that are single or have been single for quite a while, put yourself out there, my loves. Put yourself out there. Fully embrace being single. Fully enjoy being single. Even those of you guys that have recently became single and you're looking for some type of reconciliation, you're looking for this reconciliation, you want this person back into your life, fully dive deep into your singlehood because that's what's going to draw them back to you. What do I mean? What do I mean by this? The moment you stop making them your main focus, the moment you start putting the focus back on you is the moment that brings them in. Why? Because they start to feel that you're disconnecting on a spiritual level. They start to feel like something is up with Leo because I don't feel their energy that strong anymore. I feel like they may be moving on. And that's what draws them back to you. That's what brings them to you. So again, if you're looking for reconciliation, my advice is... Start making it about you, Leo, and you will see how quickly this person reaches out. Now, for others of you, those of you guys that are single, like I said, I highly encourage you to put yourself out there. I see a, uh, I see a Pisces. I see a Cancer. I see another Earth energy, Taurus, Ca Capricorn, Virgo type of energy coming in for you guys. For some of you guys, you're meeting this person through work or a colleague or someone, a co-worker that introduces you to them. But this connection, again, like I said, is very massive. Why? Because the sun and the moon is the masculine and feminine energy. It's harmonious energy. It is a connection that is going to be, like I said, felt very strongly. You guys are physically going to be very drawn towards each other. But again, the more you get to know each other, you feel this strong and powerful connection. Why? 
because they are your yin to your yang or your yang to your yin. So again, put yourself out there, Leo. All right, moving on here. Finally, last but not least, Virgo. Let's see what's going on with my Virgos out there. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. What is unfolding for them? What changes are coming towards Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Let's see what's going on with my Virgo. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with them. What's coming towards you in regards to love and romance? What changes or new opportunities are coming your way, Virgo? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go, Virgo. Let's see what's going on with you, Virgos, out there. All right, Virgo. Let's get to the needy greedy. Let's see what's going on. Very interesting. Bottom of the deck. Boom. Ten of Wands. All right, Virgo. For some of you guys, you've been putting a lot of effort and a lot of energy towards work, your career, your finances. Uh, for others of you, you've been diving really deep when it comes to your career and when it comes to your work because you're not wanting to deal with anything that has to do with your love and romance. <laughs> now, this is kind of reminding me... I'm not sure if it was Aquarius or Capricorn, but it's giving me very much those vibes. We have the Nine of Cups with the Five of Cups, right? So there is an indication here where a lot of you are feeling like you keep going through this repeated cycle of being let down or feeling like you're being left out in the cold or like you literally have engraved in you that you've experienced people walking away or you've experienced people choosing other people over you. And the reason why you keep repeating this cycle, Virgo, is because you keep telling yourself this story. So the nine of cups is wish fulfillment, happiness, and emotional fulfillment. And then we have the five of pentacles. And the three of swords in the present. So there's hopes and desires that you're wanting to experience. But you don't allow yourself to experience that based on your past or based on your past experiences. And it directly connects to your self-worth. Or to feeling that you're always left. Or to feeling that you're not worthy or that you're not enough. Or you have this tendency of continuously keep wanting to prove to people your worth. And my dear Virgo, you need to stop doing that. You don't need to prove yourself to nobody. You don't need to prove to anyone what you bring to the table. You don't need to show anyone or convince anyone of your worthiness. Because if you knew your worthiness, you would be in this Nine of Cups energy. And you would not continuously keep feeling like you're being let down or like you keep giving people that are the wrong people the opportunity. You know why? Because if you knew your worth or if you raised your standards, okay, and I'll go as far as to saying that. And I know, you know, Virgos are one of the signs that hates to hear, you know. <laughs> but when it comes to love, when you get emotionally invested, you have a tendency of sacrificing. And sometimes that comes at the expense of sacrificing your self-worth and who you are, convincing yourself of what you think you are because of how they make you feel. You're realizing this, Virgo. You're realizing that I keep going through this because it's, it's like a realization that's happening. For some of you guys, you're realizing, oh my God, I can't believe that like last year I was dying over this person and like looking at them like they're a piece of shit person. I can't believe like it's almost like you're re not rethinking, but you're like questioning yourself from past experiences or past decisions that you've made. And you're realizing that no person that you've ever lost 
was ever truly a loss because you're doing much better than them. You've done much better than your exes. Why do you think that is? Because you are the prize Virgo. Stop seeking outside validation. It starts from within. If you feel worthy, if you know that you are divine, that you are worth every effort, right? Sometimes we try to convince ourselves, well, this person's not doing enough, but with time they will see. No. Are you doing enough for them? Because if you're doing enough for them, even if it's in the beginning of a connection, then they should be reciprocating that. If they don't, it's because they're actively choosing not to. Stop allowing people to give you the bare minimum, Virgo. You want changes in your love life? Start with that. Start allowing people to think that they could entertain or that you can entertain them by doing the bare minimum. The moment you're able to bring in this structure, the moment you're able to implement how special you truly are, how amazing you fucking are, Virgo, the moment you realize this is the moment that everyone else starts to mirror that. Everyone else starts to feel it. You don't need to show it. You don't need to prove it. They just know. And they know you're not one to be messed with. And they know that only higher elevation or people that are of high value are the ones that are going to be worthy of you entertaining them and giving them the opportunity of dealing with you. The moment you start to see yourself as the prize Virgo, you will become the prize. The moment you believe that is the moment that you get that higher elevation and commitment. And for a lot of you guys, I'm going to go as far as to tell you, walk away from whatever the fuck is not working for you right now because that person is holding you back. I see two opportunities coming your way. For some of you guys, there's a fire energy. For others of you, there's a air energy. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, uh, Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries. For some of you guys, you've been hoping and wanting to hear from someone that left you out in the cold or perhaps cut communication. They're coming back around. Here's the thing. They're coming back around. But I really want you to focus on yourself, Virgo, because I see another person coming around you. And this is a new person. So what they're showing me is a new person from a past timeline is coming in. Could have been the one you felt rejected by or the one you felt wasn't giving you commitment or wasn't giving you clarity. They're coming back around because they know your worth. But as this person, a new person is also coming in. Why? Because... They didn't have to be tested to know your worth. Do you get what I'm saying? It could be the king or um, it could be the king of wands or the air sign. Only you know who your past person is. But what they're showing me is that there's a person that's coming back around from your past, right? Because, oh, you know what? Life wasn't as great without Virgo. Or you know what? The, gre the grass wasn't greener on the other side. But there's another person that's trying to get your attention, that is coming towards you, that is willing to put the effort and energy. Because they know your worth without you having to prove yourself. Who will you give that opportunity to? The version of you that knows your worth the version of you that loves yourself and knows how amazing and what a kick-ass person you are? Is that person going to give the opportunity to someone that took you for granted? Or are you going to be ecstatic about giving the opportunity to someone new to give them the opportunity of making you happy? It's about you, Virgo. So my advice is from now all the way to November, make it about you. If you want to entertain two, three, four, five, ten people, do it. Make it about you. But be selective. And what I mean by that is be cautious about the people you're giving effort and energy to. And don't let a motherfucker that left you hanging feel like they're so entitled that they can come back around 
with certainty that you will still be receiving them with open arms. All right, my loves. Well, I hope that I gave you clarity and insight. I hope that uh, there's some type of excitement there in your love life. I want to wish you guys the very best. I want to wish you a happy Hallow's Eve. And you guys stay tuned because we have tons of new videos coming through for you guys, especially spell work around this season for sure. I want to wish you guys the best and we'll see each other soon. Until then, bye.